Hola, Hola bon dia. dia. We made some good progress this week. I'm going to apologize in advance for some echoing or feedback in the microphone. Um, before we got the mics, we had to talk really loud in order to have it register on the video. And I'm still adjusting to having a microphone. So, sorry. Having trouble. With having trouble using voice. my inside voice. <laughs> This week I took over the lime wash removal in the kitchen to speed things up. I used a 40 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander and attached it to the um, shop vac. It was a bit messy, but uh, way faster. Um, half the kitchen wall is done now and uh, I'll finish the other half next week. What you doing? Sand. <laughs> uh, would you care to elaborate a little bit? Sand in walls. 40 grit on the Ryobi. Get the lime wash off. <laughs> and I see you have the For vacuum the attached so that you will make less mess than I did. Yeah, less mess. It fills up quick with these bags. Yeah. Ready? Yes. So the new plan is to sand the walls and then scrub them. Look how much it's taken off already. Yeah. It saves me 17 hours of scraping. All right, so I'll leave you to this and mm -hmm. I'm gonna go strip my drawers. Ooh, that sounds erotic. <laughs> Not really. So Grant's doing a way better job. We have the bigger scrub brush and he used the orbital sander with 40 grit sandpaper on the wall instead of trying to scrape it. So it is going faster. So I'm gonna leave you to this and continue with my furniture. Thanks, bud. Love you. Yeah, you're better. <laughs> While Grant was working on removing the lime wash, I was busy removing varnish and wood stain from the nightstand. And as a side note, you'll notice that I was not wearing goggles while using the paint stripper. And some of you may feel that this is necessary. I've just never used them while using paint stripper and I'm comfortable with my level of personal protection or lack thereof. So that is how I did it. Mm -hmm. Danger is her nom de plume. <laughs> <laughs> I even wore a bikini for some parts. So uh, yeah, bikini and flip-flops, real, awesome. real high on the safety gear list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, this time I used washing soda to clean off the wood stain from nightstand instead of baking soda and it actually worked a lot better so I got the continent brand 
and it was surprisingly cheaper than buying baking soda as well. This method gives the wood a distressed, beachy, um, almost driftwood look. So check it out and see what you think. Looks like me then. Distressed. And distressed and beachy. <laughs> distressed beach wood. I have a new approach for removing the varnish. I've gone back to sanding the flat parts because honestly, it's easier and less messy than using the paint stripper. The paint stripper, I'm just going to use in the areas that have more detail that are more difficult to sand. And then once I've done that, I'm going to experiment again with um, kind of similar to the baking soda. So our friend Maria didn't have baking soda the last time she was stripping uh, the finish off of her furniture. So she had ones that were waxed and stained. And she actually used like a OxyClean, like washing powder. So I bought some at Continent and we're going to give that a try today and see if it takes some more of the stain off so that I don't have to do as much sanding. So we're going to attempt to do a combination of all three. It's a little bit cooler today, so I'm hoping that the wood stripper doesn't dry out as fast. So I am using Saran Wrap to cover the wood stripper, but I found the last time that I used it, the, the paint stripper was still drying out underneath the Saran Wrap. And yeah, then it just ends up being a sticky mess and you have to apply more of the paint stripper in order to get everything off. So yeah. We're going to see if we can do a little bit better today, hopefully. So, yeah, I probably should be wearing goggles for this, but with the gel, I find it doesn't really splatter. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply it fairly thickly inside this front detail of the drawer. All right, so we're gonna let this sit 15 to 30 minutes and then come back to it. Oh, I see that stripper worked really well. Looks like it stripped all your clothes off. <laughs> I got warm. Uh -huh. That's how you roll? That's how I roll. Just working in your rubber gloves and your bikini? Yep. And your flip-flops in the shop? Yep. Okay. Safety first. Yeah, safety first. So I left it a little too long. Okay. And it dried? It dried. So I had to add a little bit more. But it looks like it's worked fairly well. Okay. So you just have to add a bit more of the paint stripper and scrub it in. So I was just using the toothbrush to scrub it into all of the grooves here. Mm -hmm. And it actually looks pretty good. Okay. Excellent. What do you think? I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. No. I'll help you. Somebody's still in there. Hey. Trying to work on furniture and there's these two sleeping in it. Hey? Why are you sleeping in my furniture? All right. So now I'm using the washing powder with boiling hot water and scrubbing it onto the furniture. 
I did this one already. Because it's wet, it's hard to tell, but it is lighter. And you'll see all of the color coming out in the water on this one. And you can see the color in the water that's coming off of the furniture that it's working. So we're just going to continue doing this. And it's starting to dry, so I can kind of see the color. I think I'm going to scrub this one again as well to try and lighten it a little bit more. So you can see the water is kind of an amber color. And that is the wood stain coming off. So that is good. You can see there's a little bit here. So I need to scrub along this side to get more of the color out. So I'll just continue with this and see how it looks when I'm done. So you can see where the varnish was removed. It has brought it down to the wood, which is perfect. And where there was a bit of varnish still, so I didn't get enough of the varnish off when I was sanding, it's held the color. So the drawers are ready to refinish, but I'm going to need to use paint stripper on the detail on the front here. And I'll need to sand again where, yeah, where I didn't do a good enough job the first How's time. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, is that your new home? Apparently. He was trying to eat the sandpaper. He was like trying to cuddle with me while I'm sanding. And then mm. he finally gave up and decided to hang out in here. That looks really good, actually. I like the distressed on the side. Um, I'm going to completely sand that, though. I know. It just looks so, cool um, like that. It worked pretty good, but you can see some spots here where I didn't get the varnish off well enough before mm -hmm. using the washing powder. Mm -hmm. So those areas I'm going to have to sand more. And it also is in all of the little grooves around the edge. So I didn't get into the groove with the sandpaper enough. Okay, Madonna, get into the groove. <laughs> to take the varnish off. Mm -hmm. So I may have to use some paint stripper along the edge. I'm not sure. I'm trying to do it with sandpaper. Mm. Okay. So that I can avoid using more paint stripper. So one thing that I did notice is that it went well. This is not a good example. This piece was damaged to begin with. So I'm going to have to pull out any punky wood and then use the wood filler to repair it. But using the washing powder gives the wood almost a, like a distressed beech wood kind of a look. So it, it makes the wood lighter and um, it feels a little bit softer, but it's hard to tell because it had the varnish on it before. So I have no idea. So I just filled the bucket with water out of there so she could drink out of the bucket to make it easier. And now and she's trying she's to stick trying, her head in there. She's trying to drink out of the green one. Mm -hmm. So here, let's take a look at this one. Yeah, you can see it's brought the texture out a little bit on the wood grain. So mm -hmm. that's now what I'm sanding mm -hmm. because, yeah, I've never use that much liquid on wood before when I'm refinishing it. It kind of almost felt wrong to put that much water on, on wooden furniture, but it seems to have turned out fine. And I just need to do a little bit of sanding, which I had to do anyways. So yeah, worked way better than paint stripper. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go.
We were invited by George to join him at an event that he organized at a river beach. Because it was primarily organized for the children that Alberto helps through his Reencontro program, I don't have a lot of footage from the event, but I have included footage of those whom I had permission to film for our YouTube channel. I also spent some time this week making gifts for our friends. One thing that I enjoy and haven't taken the time for during our renovations is making jewelry. I like to make jewelry out of natural materials that we find at the beach, combined with beads made from wood, um, glass, and stone. So I'm sitting outside enjoying the sun, but I'm also working on making some jewelry. So I have a couple of Mary's bean right here, Mary's beans. You can see the one on this side is a lot shinier because I've been sanding this one. And then this is kind of dull and that's how I found it on the beach. So I'm going to polish them up just with some sandpaper. And then I will be drilling holes in them so that I can string them on a necklace. I also have a bunch of Job's Tears. And these were found in Dominica. So they actually grow on a grass that grows in the Caribbean. And you pull the, the tufts of, um, I don't think this is the actual seed. It's like the tufts from the seeds. And you pull those out from the middle. And these ones already have holes. So you just can string them and make a necklace. They actually used to make rosaries out of Job's Tears. I'm not sure if they still do, but they're a really nice natural bead that you can use for jewelry making. Okay, let's see what Christina's doing outside. Huh, using power tools in your bikini. Yeah. Why not? Is that how you roll now? Just That's how I roll. Just using power tools in your bikini? Yep. Because it's like summer out or something? Exactly. Okay. So I got one side done. Now I need to get the other side done and then kind of straighten them out because I had to go in on an angle. <laughs> no, they're not exactly even. They're a little bit offset. One's nicely centered and this one's a bit more forward, but I guess that'll have to do. The sun is like, there you go. I can see your eyeballs now. I can see my eyeballs. Like, All right, let's like see what it looks mask. like. I might have to polish another one. Okay. I'm wearing the new necklace that I made, so I'm just modeling it. It's not for me. 
It is a gift for our friend George's wife, and we'll be giving it to her in a couple of days, so you'll see this on the weekend. Let's get a close up so you can see the gray and white beads are Job's tears, and then the center pendant is a Mary's bean. So the Mary's bean I found in Belize, and the Job's tears we found in Dominica. So we didn't get as much done for refinishing furniture and working on renovations, but that is because I was busy making some gifts. Oh, yeah. So I made a couple of baskets and the baskets may have something in them as well. <gasps> wow. So that wow. one is for you. you are amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. That so, is super cool. Oh, wow. Did you make that too? I did. You I did. like making jewelry, and I usually use natural materials, yeah. so like wooden beads, glass beads, shells, yeah. wow. um, oh, beach beans. Cool. That's very cool. <laughs> Those rings are made out of cahoon nuts, so we were hoping one might be big enough for George. I oh, think he so would like right. to wear yeah, one. Like, they're really big ones. Oh, that's, that's incredible. And oh, yeah. Super cool. Your necklace so nice. oh, that's beautiful. is uh, Mary's bean, uh -huh. and it has like uh, two grooves on. Is that the back or the front? That's the back. This is the front. Uh -huh. So it has two grooves that form a cross. It does. So it's also known as the crucifix bean. Wow. And uh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Super cool. And I then love it. The gray ones are Job's tears. Oh wow! So and they used to make That's jewelry. The real name. That's the real name. Wow! So they're I didn't know that. Uh, a seed that grows on grass in the Caribbean. So we wow. got we got the Job's tears in Dominica, and the Mary's bean is from Belize. Wow. wow, this is incredible! <laughs> this is way. They I, used to oh, I'm, make jewelry with the Job's tears since. 3000 BC. Wow. And then once they started making rosaries, that was one of the materials that they would make the really? rosaries out of. Oh my goodness. Your mom's gonna love it too. My mother is yes. gonna love this wow. too. <laughs> yeah. She loves rosaries, one. But um yeah, that's wow. incredible. Job's tears. It's yeah. beautiful. So cool. And they actually have um you don't have to drill a hole through them. So the center of the seed yeah. has like a little tuft of I don't know, I guess grass this seeds or something cool. coming out the top mm -hmm. and you just pull those it's out really and then cool. you can string them. And you can thread them. Yeah. Yeah. This is incredible. I cannot believe you made this. <laughs> we watched the show <laughs> where you made, you said, oh, I went to the village in Louisiana yeah. yeah. and I got a basket or I made a basket, you know, after the, the village visit. And I was like, how did, how did she, she do, do that? that? It's been three days. <laughs> I am shocked. I've looked at those well, baskets. Wow, so tight, I still man. like that one better. I'm going to have to take a look at that one and see if I can duplicate, this duplicate one. that this one. Because cool, my it's problem cool. with crochet is I tend to have too much tension, which is why it's tight. So I need to try and make one that's like this one is like softer and oh, probably a lot beautiful. easier yeah. to make and maybe won't kill my wrist as much. <laughs> wow. This is amazing. This is amazing. And you know what? I think it matches so both houses. Oh, that matches the lake house really well. This matches all the colors we have yes. in the city house. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. Wow. So I made this good color beautiful. choices. Very good. Yes. <laughs> very, good. very good. Thank you for watching this week's video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give us a like. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. It does help us out. And take care, and we'll see you next week. Okay, bye. bye.